This is Tim Tucker, AE6LX from WorldWideDX.com. I'm in the dining room today and I'm getting ready to build the brand new Ellicraft Ultra Portable HF VHF transceiver. I've got my static mat, I've got all the parts laid out on the table, so let's get started. Alright, the first step is to remove all the vinyl tape that is in all the various places around the front cover and around the two side panels. You can see everywhere where it's silver is where I removed the tape. And then we mount the speaker with the, with the felt covering in the faceplate. The next step of the process is to install all of these standoffs. Now each standoff has a specific place that it goes and they're all unique so make sure you read the manual. After you do this, the manual has a very important step that I want to point out, which is taking a straight edge, place it across the corners of the standoffs, and make sure that the bottom of the edge doesn't touch the LCD screen in either direction. This is a safety precaution because when you put this together, it says that if it touches here, it'll touch when you put the case together and crack the panel. In my case, I had missed a lock washer underneath this standoff and the straight edge touched right there. And if I hadn't have done this step, I would have ran into this process, or into this problem. So again, reading the manual is a good thing. The next step of the process is to insert the control panel board onto the front cover and place the front face bezel over it. You see I've installed the, the screws right here. When you do this, make sure you tighten these down uh, not very snug at first. Tighten them down evenly to make sure that everything lines up properly and then do a final tighten. Uh, make sure you also don't over tighten them to crack the board. Otherwise that's ruined and you'll have to get a new one. Also make sure you don't pinch the the speaker wire underneath here when you're putting the board into the front panel. Now we've installed the VFO A encoder. Uh, here's the back side of it shown plugged in. Uh, it's important to understand that there's a little shield that goes between the encoder and the speaker right here. So you want to make sure you have that installed properly and make sure you're clearing the speaker wires there. Now turn it over and you can see on this side that we've installed the encoder and there's a lock washer and a nut that secures it in a place. You only want to do this finger tight. If you over tighten this um, too far with a wrench or something like that, you'll cause this board to twist and damage the board. The next thing to do is to put the side panels on. You can see I put the side panel on here and attach the nut for the mic and the side panel for the other side. Next the knobs go on. You've installed this flat screw, flathead screw and this nylon standoff on the bottom of this, uh, this battery retainer and now we're going to take this shield that has tape on it that I've already taken off and we're going to place it on the stand on the shield like this making sure that it's completely flush uh, with this uh, with this shield. The note in the manual says if you don't make sure it's completely flush on there you run the risk of shorting out the batteries. Now we've done the next two steps mount the battery retainer onto the back of the the main control board and we've taken the back cover and removed all the vinyl tape that was covering up all the all the grounding points on the on the back cover there. On to the next step. Now I've installed the heat sink and the serial number and these two rubber feet here. The next thing to do after you install the nylon washers um, with the rubber feet is to cut these off so that they're flush. Cut cut these. Uh, nylon uh, screws down so they're flush with the back. Now we've assembled the swivel out feet, put the end caps on, attached all the screw hardware, and we have added all the screws and standoffs on the back cover here. Now we're looking at the result of the next several steps. First you place the shield onto the board you mount the board into the back cover, which I've already done, and then you attach 
the screws to the power amplification transistors here and attach the BNC connector here. So that's about three or four steps that I've shown completed here. The next step is to install the battery holders. Now, first a little trick. Um, when you're installing the battery holders as well as um, the main board with all these standoffs and screws, the trick to getting this all aligned properly is to loosen all the screws on the back for the standoffs on the back of the board so that when you put the board on and then the battery uh, on top of the board, they have enough place that they can all move around the board and the battery holders and the screws can all move around um, so everything lines up perfectly. If you do that, it goes in in a snap. If you tighten up the screws on the back for the standoffs and try to align it, you'll have a little bit of difficulty. With the battery itself, um, this only goes in one way. And the manual talks about this, but the pictures are a little bit hard to uh, see in the, in the manual because in the black and white pictures, you lose a little bit of the color of the red and black. The trick to installing this is to look at this heat, uh, heat shrink right here. This short heat shrink section that, that's on the black wire that changes to the red wire has to be installed on this left side position. If you try to install this tray over here, it won't fit and you'll never get it. So the short lead, the short black lead with the heat shrink goes on the left side and everything installs properly. I bought the optional auto tuner board, which is shown here. So I'm going to talk about how to install this. I found the easiest way is to first attach the antenna BNC connector wire where it goes. It doesn't matter which way it goes. Um, and then you can see that there are two sets of pins here and one over here. These align with the two points on the board here and here. So put the wire on and then align this one first, the four pin connector first, and then align the eight pin connector back here visually and then slide the whole thing down on the board and attach the two screws. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now and stop the camera. Okay, so now you see we've mounted the auto tuner in place. Fits in there nice and snug. The next step is to install the, uh, the optional roofing filter if you purchase this. This goes right up here next to the battery. There's a little uh, socket for it. The part with the label, the white label, goes towards the battery tray. The other thing it comes with is a little bit longer screw um, up top here. You can see I've already taken out the other one and started uh, to thread the longer one in place. That screw actually passes through the opening here to help secure the filter in place so it doesn't work its way out uh, when you're carrying it around in your backpack or transporting it. We're on to the final assembly now. I've fitted the two swivel feet in place here and you can see we do this loosely um, at first. You don't tighten these down. There's a big caution in the manual that says if you tighten these down you'll actually um, you'll, you'll actually grind the screws into the board here and damage it. So you don't want to tighten that down until um, everything is in place. After that we find the ribbon cable and we attach it. It's important to pay attention to the manual which way this goes. It only goes one way. They are labeled on the back which side goes to the control panel and which side goes to the RF deck. So you put this, push it down in place gently making sure you're not pinching any of these speaker leads and then you crease this so that it kind of forms a little U down next to the board. So now we've taken the control panel, attached the ribbon cable from the RF deck to the control panel, and we've attached the battery cable onto the, onto the control panel as well. This only goes in one way, it's keyed. Um, this is where you find out if you uh, routed all your cables properly and flex this properly, because after we install the batteries, we're gonna go ahead and, and close this up and finish the assembly, and when it's closed, if these things pinch, you'll, you'll know it right away. So. Next step is to install the batteries and, and finish the assembly. So here it is, the fully assembled, ready to go, Ellicraft KX3 Ultra Portable Transceiver assembled on my dining room table. 
A couple of final thoughts about the build process. First, this video is not intended to be a substitute for reading the instruction guide. The manual is very well thought out, it's very thorough, and it's very complete, and you should use that as your guide to building this, uh, this, this amazing little rig. Second, it's really not that difficult to build this. Uh, you can build this in a couple of hours. It's a lot of nuts and bolts and screws and standoffs and some tight quarters, but I really do think anybody can build this. And hopefully this video has encouraged you to take this task on yourself. So for the Worldwide Radio Forum at www.worldwidedx.com, this has been Tim Tucker, AE6LX, and I hope to catch you on the air from the field with my new Alleycraft KX3 transceiver.